Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Daily Devotions with Pastor Sutton on this Thursday, January 26th. Not a lot of time for fooling around today. I've got a uh, Bible study over in Rhinelander, so i got to get over there. It's supposed to start at 930, but I, I never get there in time because I'm here with you guys. But um, anyway, good morning. Glad you are here with us on this uh, this. Thursday morning. Um, we have a commemoration today. Today we remember St. Titus, pastor and confessor, one of the <clears throat> one of the two pastors that uh, Paul talks about uh, specifically and wrote epistles to, that is, wrote letters to. St. Titus, like Timothy, with whom he is often associated, was a friend and co-worker of St. Paul. Titus was a Gentile, perhaps a native of Antioch, who accompanied Paul and Barnabas to Jerusalem when they brought assistance to the Christians in Judea during the famine. That's in Acts chapter 11 and mentioned again in Galatians chapter 2. It is not known if he accompanied Paul on his first and second missionary journeys, uh, but Titus was with him on the third one when he helped reconcile the Corinthians to Paul, and that's in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, and assisted with the collection for the church in Jerusalem, the, the mission work which the, uh, which the uh, uh, leadership of the church in Jerusalem had put upon Paul in 2 Corinthians 8, that's mentioned. It's also in Acts. It was probably on the return to Jerusalem that Paul left Titus in Crete, and that's uh, we're, we know that from Titus chapter 1. Afterward, he is found working in Dalmatia. We hear about that in 2 Timothy. According to tradition, Titus re returned to Crete, where he served as a bishop until he died in about 96 AD. So just shy of the end of the first century. Uh, so today we remember Titus, St. Titus, pastor and confessor. Let's see who else is with us here today. Geraldine and Neil, good morning. Michael, Kathy and Mike. I wonder if that's a typo. Anyway, good morning to you guys. Jill and John, good morning. Jerry, good morning. A little bit of snow out there, huh? Three inches of heavy wet stuff. Ann, Deb, Grant, good morning to you guys. Verna, good morning. There's Renee. Good morning, everyone. A nice white blanket of snow. Yeah, okay. Well, good morning, Renee. There's Bonnie piping in here. I'm uh, uh, just going to refresh quick and make sure that nobody else popped in while I was saying hi to all you. Oh, yep, see, there's Mooshtak. Good, e good evening and good morning to you, uh, my friend. All right, again, not uh, messing around today because of the timeline. So let's uh, move right into this. If you have the Lutheran service book, page 295, Daily prayer for individuals and families. Oh, hello to anyone else who not chiming in but is watching now, later, or uh, over on YouTube when it's up there. God's blessings to you. I'm glad you're joining us for a little time in God's Word. Again, Lutheran Service Book 295, Daily Prayer for Individuals and Families, the Morning Order. Here is my treasury of daily prayer as, uh, as we do each day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm today... <clears throat> Psalm 18, verses 46 to 50. And in the interest of, of my time deficit here, we're, I'm just going to read the psalm. I'm not going to, I'm not planning on commenting on it anyway. Psalm 18, 46 to 50. The Lord lives, and blessed be my rock, the, and exalted be the God of my salvation. The God who gave me vengeance and subdued peoples under me, who delivered me from my enemies. Yes, you exalted me above those who rose against me. You rescued me from the man of violence. For this I will praise you, O Lord, among the nations, and sing to your name. Great salvation he brings to his king, and shows steadfast love to his anointed, to David and his offspring, forever and ever. 
Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our uh, reading today, Zechariah chapter 2, verses 1 through chapter 3, verse 10. So we got a little bit of a lengthy reading here. <clears throat> um, yeah. <clears throat> so Zechariah 2, starting at verse 1. And I, ugh, and I lifted my eyes and saw, and behold, a man with a measuring line in his hand. Then I said, where are you going? And he said to me, to measure Jerusalem, to see what is its width and what is its length. And behold, the angel who talked with me came forward, and another angel came forward to meet him and said to him, run, say to that young man, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as villages without walls because of the multitude of people and livestock in it. And I will be to her a wall of fire all around, declares the Lord, and I will be the glory in her midst. Up, up, flee from the land to the north, the land of the north, declares the Lord. For I have spread you abroad as the four winds of the heavens, declares the Lord. Up, escape to Zion. You who dwell in the, with the daughter of Babylon. For thus said the Lord of hosts, after his glory, sent me to the nations who plundered you. For he who touches you touches the apple of his eye. Behold, I will shake my hand over them, and they shall become plunder for those who serve them. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion. For behold, I come. And I will dwell in your midst, declares the Lord. And many nations shall join themselves to the Lord in that day, and shall be my people. And I will dwell in your midst, and you shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. And the Lord will inherit Judah as his portion in the Holy Land, and, I, and will again choose Jerusalem. Be silent all flesh before the Lord, for he has roused himself from his holy dwelling. Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan, standing at his right hand to accuse him. And the Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, O Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is not this a brand plucked from the fire? Now Joshua was standing before the angel, clothed in, with filthy garments, and the angel said to those who were standing before him, Remove the filthy garments from him. And to him he said, Behold, I have taken your iniquity away from you, and I will clothe you with pure vestments. And I said, Let them put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head and clothed him with garments. And the angel of the Lord was standing by. And the angel of the Lord solemnly assured Joshua, Thus says the Lord of hosts, If you will walk in my ways and keep my charge, then you shall rule my house and have charge in my courts, and I will give you the right of access among those who are standing here. Hear now, O Joshua, the high priest, you and your friends who sit before you, for they are men who are a sign. Behold, I will bring my servant, the branch. For behold, on the stone that I have set before Joshua, on a single stone with seven eyes, I will engrave its inscription, declares the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity of this land in a single day. In that day, declares the Lord of hosts, every one of you will invite his neighbor to come under his vine and under his fig tree. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Huh. Hmm. 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 Well, you know what? Today, I'm not going to wrestle with this. Oh, I know you wanted me to. I mean, we got, we've got Joshua, we got Satan, we got angels appearing, we got. Um, 
the Lord of hosts sending someone who sounds like it's the, the, the son. Um, uh, and, and we've got peace amongst the nations. Every one of you will invite his neighbor to come under his vine and under his fig tree. But the, but the writing included in the, in the uh, treasury of daily prayer today comes from Martin Luther. And, and he's writing on this text. And that doesn't always happen. But he's writing on this specific text. Text. So uh, instead of me sitting here and trying to struggle with this on a day when I'm short on time and can't think, let me just share this writing from Martin Luther with you. And I'm I'm not sure. I'm assuming it comes from um, one of the translated uh, books of Luther that we have in the American edition, but um, which is up to like seventy books now or something like that. 70 volumes. But let me share this with you here from Martin Luther. This is a wonderfully choice vision, for it very vividly reveals to us the heart and innermost emotions of the priest. He had heard the clear command of God to rebuild the temple. Then, after hearing that word, he thought that he should listen to God, but he still kept wrestling with himself over the problem thus. Who knows whether God intends to approve? Perhaps God will reject us sinners. This is exactly the way the human heart battles against sin in the presence of God. For Satan so inflates and exaggerates sins that the heart becomes convinced that God will reject it. It can conceive no other God but one who now threatens it with a beating or a flogging. So here the high priest Joshua, crushed and terrified by his sins, does not dare go on with his task. Therefore, he is strengthened and encouraged to believe that the Lord is not angry, that he has turned away the accusation of Joshua's conscience and is accusing Satan himself. He so discourages the heart with the heinousness of its sin that it cannot go on to serve its calling. The Lord rebuke you, O Satan. This is a wonderful and sweet comfort. Everything is contained in the fullness of this comfort. So neatly has he arranged all his words, as if to say, from now on, Satan, stop opposing the priest. The Lord orders all things cursed, which you inspire the timid priest to think about and which frighten him from his task. You are causing him to be downcast before God and to dare nothing before men. You are acting as if the Lord had completely rejected Jerusalem. But the Lord has not done this. On the contrary, he has chosen it and loves it as his own possession. Everything in this vision is revealed in such a way that the vision declares and reveals God's will to the priest. It strengthens the priest so that he no longer doubts that God will approve of his ministry, that his filthy garments have now been changed, and that his sin has been taken away. Now he wears new clothes. That is a happy and joyful conscience, which no longer flees from God, which thinks nothing evil about God, but hopes for every good thing. Thus, the fresh clothes do not mean works, but grace and faith. So a little commentary on that text from uh, the blessed Dr. Martin Luther. Worthwhile. Let's go to the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Almighty God, you called Titus to the work of a pastor and a teacher. Make all shepherds of your flock diligent in preaching your holy word, so that the whole world may know the immeasurable riches of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we continue with the Apostles' Creed on this Thursday morning after I have a sip. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> for ourselves and others on this Thursday morning, O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it all together. As I begin a new day with you, search my heart, dear Lord, and purify my affections so that I may love only those things that please you and may put you first in everything. Help me to overcome the temptations I will meet this day. Strengthen my faith so that victory over the devil may be mine to your glory. Keep me mindful of the sufficiency of your grace and let your strength be made perfect in my weakness. Give me the grace to guard against sins of the tongue. Preserve me from thinking evil in my heart against my neighbor. Teach me the joy of walking the ways of your commandments and bless those who walk in your fear and favor. Watch over me this day when dangers overtake me and ward off any evil of body or soul. If afflictions are to come to me this day, by your gracious direction, keep me humble and obedient to your loving will. Thanks be to you, O Lord, for all your past benefits and for all your promises of future mercy. Direct my day in such a way that I may learn to praise you better tonight for the favors of this day. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the mercies that are manifold each day of our lives. And we pray for those who are suffering or ill, we, whether it be uh, weakness of the body by age, injury, or ailment. We ask that you give comfort, strength, and assurance to those for whom we pray. Especially this day, Pat, Lois, Anne, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Dan, Ezra, Neely, Jeremy, Ashley, Renee, Cora, and all those who call upon your most holy name. Assure them always of the love that you've given them through your Son, who is our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, yes, quick, quick today. Uh, but that brings our devotions for this Thursday to a close. I need to get myself up to Rhinelander, but I got to upload this to YouTube first. So God's blessings and peace be with you. And we'll see you back here tomorrow, Friday morning for our daily devotions together. God's peace. Thank you.